Now, from some of the other conversations you'd had with other sellers on Zoom calls or, or on any sort of call, mm-hmm. not to nitpick or to point anybody out or anything like that, but what are some of the things that you noticed in sellers that you didn't gel with that they mm-hmm. in how they communicated? Just so people can sort of see like, all right, what should I be looking out for and how people may deflect answers or not actually answer the question the way it was asked or the communication that you may have had through through the calls. Yeah, what was what was what made it night and day? If it was night and day, maybe. But what was the what was the opposition like there? Yeah, I mean, I think um, the reasoning for which the individual was selling the site varied. Some some of them didn't have great answers. There was stock yeah. answers like we we want to go into other opportunities. There the the um, the story behind their investment in the site, whether it was a they had just acquired it or they just created it in order to sell it, uh, which is fine. I mean, those, those are fine to, to purchase, but that wasn't what I wanted. I think the, the, you know, the valuations, how that, I, I, you know, I asked questions about justifying the price at which the individual was selling the, uh, the, the site. They weren't always up to speed. And also kind of, you know, reasons, explanations for certain blips in, in traffic and revenues, why the traffic was going down for a period of time, but even more importantly, why the traffic surged three months before selling the site. Those, mm-hmm. those were red flags for me. And the answers were, they weren't necessarily the most sincere. They're very stock. And so it, when, when those answers were not you know, really good, I questioned the seller and therefore the site. Yeah, it's a really good pickup. It's a really good pickup. And all those little things I see basically come from the foundation of somebody who started a site or bought a site to flip it or bought a started a site to sell it. And that's their main goal is is money. And they may have missed some certain things around building the asset to be so damn solid that the owner can have a more passive lifestyle and a passive business whereas you know they said that you can see that the owner of the site the previous owner of your site that you bought actually just used the business as a great asset because it was built well to leverage off and have a great lifestyle and there's a there's it's so different to see those types of businesses because when it comes from that foundation of the seller's intention being long-term easy run less stress those businesses are so much more valuable yes. and you may pay a high, high multiple for them than somebody that's just like, I just need a quick buck. Right. Yeah. Is that what you notice as well? Or do you have anything Absolutely. to say to that? Yeah. I, I think, I think this, this particular seller had lived off this site and was able to travel based on the revenues of the site for a few years. And so cool. his, his livelihood depended on it. And so he created a website that would be sustainable. That would, you know, he, he had answered that if I didn't sell a site, I'd be okay because honestly, this is my bread and butter. And so that he put that much care into the site where it seemed like it'd be a great thing to own as well. Whereas other sellers, you could tell they weren't really invested in the site in not only monetarily, but otherwise. Um, and they were definitely a little pushy in the sale and you could, you could sense the impatience in, in their, in their selling. So I didn't, I didn't like that. Yeah. 